Another cloud infrastructure provider takes a dirt nap. <laughs> Let's talk about it. So welcome back to the Cloud Computing Insider. My name's Dave. Let's get started. So I was hoping to do some work this morning, but evidently uh, Cloudflare chose to uh, have an outage, which means all the uh, systems that I use that are dependent on Cloudflare weren't working as well. Obviously, like we saw with the uh, AWS outage and the Microsoft outage. And here's three that happened in about, uh, you know, 30 days time. And people are sending me emails and messaging me on LinkedIn and Twitter sorry, X, and asking me what the hell is going on. And so let's talk about that a bit. So if you don't know what Cloudflare is, it's a pretty important player. They're a web, they're a web infrastructure and security company, and they provide services such as content delivery, uh, DDoS protection, and web traffic optimization, really a content delivery network uh, to enhance performance and security of websites and applications. So they're one of these infrastructure guys out there that no one's ever heard of typically uh, in the user-based space because it's not a retail-based uh, product, but certainly people who are into web development and cloud development, things like that, know what web Cloudflare is, and obviously it going down is not a good thing, and there were many systems that were affected by it today. Uh, GPT wasn't working, X wasn't working, you know, I had a bunch of uh, accounting services I used, they weren't working as well, and uh uh, it's starting to get better, you know, here later in the morning, but obviously, you know, lost uh, half a day's productivity and, but I'm just a, you know, single, you know, uh, just a single guy running a consulting organization, multi-billion dollar organizations are going to have a bigger bill, uh, for the reaction of, or basically the impact from these outages. So not to pick on Cloudflare, I think we have a tendency to kind of get in a big circle and uh, and and take shots at whoever has an outage. Outages are going to be uh, the reality moving forward, but there seems to be more and more of them happening. We weren't as vulnerable, uh, at least it seems to me, you know, over the last 15 years of using infrastructure providers. And now that many companies are becoming dependent on them and many companies are become, becoming dependent on companies that are becoming dependent on them, uh, we're seeing kind of a cascading effect from many of these outages, which is, you know, hurting productivity. And also people are asking me the question, I'm kind of thinking about it as well, you know, why are we having so many of these in such a short period of time? And is this going to be, you know, really the trend moving forward? Are these outages going to be a, a monthly, you know, perhaps weekly appearance? I certainly hope not. But that does seem to be the case. Now we can speculate in terms of why this is occurring. Uh, I think in some instances it could be we're dealing with the second stringers. Uh, in other words, not primary uh, talent who are operating these systems. Uh, you know, as these uh, cloud-based systems move uh, from, you know, kind of innovative startup mode into, you know, old infrastructure mode and get different personnel in there, we may be skimping or they may be skimping on the kind of talent that's needed to be in there to run these things is obviously many of these come down to mistakes that are made. You know, even we can look at the mechanisms and the technology that went wrong, still resiliency is going to be dependent on planning and dependent on the amount of intelligence that you're putting on your operations team to run things ongoing. Anytime I've operated something, when I've skimped on talent, I've, that's always burned me. In other words, it's uh, they make a mistake. They, you know, forget to back something up. They don't have a resiliency plan in place. And if, unless I'm monitoring it and basically micromanaging them, um, I don't catch it. And suddenly we have some, some outages that are occur. And I think we're seeing similar things here, even though speculating you know, I don't know. I don't work there. I don't work, work at Cloudflare. I don't work at AWS. I don't work at Microsoft. I'm not sure what's going on behind the scenes, but I'm just uh, assuming that something like that is going on just because of the fact of the matter is we're seeing so many so quick and in such a short period of time. So the outage be, uh, began at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard, disrupting major websites and services worldwide, uh, including uh, including X. Talked about that. League of Legends. Oh my gosh! And uh, Canva. And that's what uh, what screwed me up because I had some Canva work to do today. Uh, I couldn't get that work done. Scheduled maintenance at Cloudflare's uh, uh, Santiago data center co coincided with the outage. Uh, but there's no direct evidence out there that these these two events are linked. And also. There was a temporary suspension of Cloudflare's warp encryption service in London, compounded connectivity issues, suggesting multiple factors may have contributed to the disruption. And the incident really kind of underscores the risk of 
over centralizing internet infrastructure. We talked about that before. We saw the same sort of an impact with the AWS and Microsoft outage, where a single provider's failures can have a cascading effect uh, amongst the infrastructure out there. So people are often confused why everything stops working if Amazon stops working, Amazon Web Services, why everything stops working if Microsoft Azure starts stops working and now Cloudflare. The reality is we've grown so dependent on these infrastructure providers that we really don't think too much about it. And so it's not necessarily the fact that these providers are going down. It's the number of dependencies that are being leveraged by these providers. And people who are dependent on these providers don't have any backup or resiliency plan in place. And you can kind of tell if their provider goes down, oh, well, they're not going to be working. And they have to wait for their primary infrastructure provider to come back up and running before they're able to resume services. And obviously, that's going to multiply the effect of these outages. So instead of just losing, you know, say a billion dollars for, you know, single, you know, cloud outage, because there's so many dependencies and so much impactful cascading effects that can happen, they end up being many billions of dollars as an impact from these outages. And as I talked about you know, in a video where who pays for these things, you're not going to get your money back. It's pretty much money that goes out the window. So I, I don't think this is really a time to get mad at the cloud providers or get mad at Cloudflare. I think these outages are going to be, you know, kind of a way of life, but they should be held accountable in terms of, you know, having some sort of resiliency plan that's in place. So their outages are going to be few and far between. That doesn't seem to be the case these days. They seem to be happening more, happening more and more. And also the secondary players, the people who are dependent on Cloudflare, people who are dependent on Microsoft, people who are dependent on AWS, should also have resiliency plans in place as well. The ability to fail over to some sort of an independent backup system uh, that's able to take over so people don't experience what I experienced this morning and basically a whole morning of not being able to carry out the business that you need to carry out. And multiply that times many millions of people out there who are losing productivity that runs up a pretty big bill where it makes the resiliency, which is typically going to be a bit more expensive, worth it uh, for many of these uh, players that are out there. And I always talk about resiliency that's going to be part of an architecture, and many times it's skipped over. Normally it's skipped over because of the complexities and because of the money that it costs. And and I understand why it's uh, you know easy to do that because you're not going to feel the immediate impact of outages that occur right out of the gate. It's going to be years down the line when you start building up scale and, you know, many people are dependent on you. And if the resiliency plan is not there, the outages are going to have these these massive impacts that are, that are going to, you know, send ripples, you know, throughout the internet, like we saw with the last three outages. So I don't think we're aware too much in terms of what the impact's going to be and also aware in terms of the architectural approaches and tricks, you know, so to speak, that can use to make them more resilient. So what do you do to avoid uh, being impacted by this? Well, you know, multi-provider strategies we talked about here before. I'm not putting your eggs in one basket. So avoid relying on solely on a single cloud service provider, adopting multi-cloud or multi-CDN, multi-content delivery network strategy to ensure redundancy and minimize downtime during outages. And I'm sure there's a few organizations out there that, that played the game correctly. So in other words, they had a multi-CDN strategy, not necessarily solely dependent on Cloudflare. And let me know if you're one of those companies. And the outage didn't impact you because you're immediately able to uh, fail over to a secondary provider. And maybe the performance was a bit, you know, degraded, you know, during that time. The scalability was a bit degraded during that time. But you didn't stop service, which is important. And now that everybody's really dependent on these cloud providers out there, uh, you know, certainly software as a service systems and infrastructure systems you already talked about, that's going to set you apart and providing resiliency, you know, through some of these major outages. If you're not dependent on these infrastructure service providers as the sole dictator of whether you're working or not, and that's just a smart thing to do. So the next would be to develop a comprehensive disaster recovery plan. Uh, and you need a robust, regularly tested disaster recovery plan and business continuity plan that includes clear steps for mitigating service disruptions. And Again, I'm, I'm a bit redundant here for what I just said a minute ago, but I can't believe the number of organizations out there that I consult with, I talk with, you know, um, and, you know, certainly people who read my books and, you know, watch these videos or, you know, follow my, my column that don't have these resiliency plans in place. And you're just asking for it if you do that. And in many cases, uh, the response to me is going to be, well, nothing happened in the last 10 years since we started running these systems. 
Yeah, that's right. But that doesn't mean it won't happen now. And that doesn't mean it's not going to impact the company to the point of making the company fail. I do think that we're going to see companies, certainly that are more vulnerable, undercapitalized, you know, things like that, that are not going to recover from many of these failures because their clients, and certainly we saw this with the AWS outage and the Microsoft outage, are, and customers are going to give up on them because these outages are basically them stopping service are uh, too, uh, you know, uh, you know, too, uh, you know, happening too much. And I think that many of these companies aren't going to be able to recover for it. They're going to go out. And obviously they have to make core decisions and they're dependent on a single cloud provider, infrastructure provider because of the, you know, monetary things. Obviously, if you're, you know, leveraging a multi-cloud, multi-infrastructure strategy, you know, that's going to cost more money. And if you're a small company, that's going to be, uh, you know, removing capital from your business. But in, in my position and in and, and, and my opinion, you can't afford not to do that. That's just good business. And I'm not sure why people skip these architectural options because they've been out there for years. We've known how to do this stuff for the last 30 years, different technology and certainly technology has changed over time, but put some discipline behind your infrastructure, put some discipline behind your resiliency. So next would be to invest in uh, monetary and failover technologies. Enterprises should deploy advanced monitoring tools to detect disruptions early and respond to them early. Um, can't stress that enough. So observability is a thing now. We've always had monitoring and observability tools. We may have called them observability. But you can see when these outages are about to occur, there's going to be consistent behaviors or misbehaviors that occur out of your system. You know, whether it's packet disruption, you know, too many packet resends, things like that, you know, that may indicate, you know, that a service is about to go down and your ability to kind of switch over to another service. So your ability to monitor and understand this stuff, not just, you know, not just take massive amounts of data, you know, that are coming off of your key infrastructure providers, but understand what it means and be able to respond to it and do so before the outage occurs is going to put you way ahead of the game. And that technology is, is existed in our world of enterprise, you know, computing, you know, for the last 20 years and certainly exists in the cloud space. There's lots of tools out there that you're able to leverage. Uh, you should uh, look at them, their applicability in your particular problem domain, take a look at them and use them, you know, as you feel you need to. You, you, you can't afford not to. So that's all I have for this ad hoc video. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Let me know if you, you like these or not. Obviously, I'm, you know, growing the channel. The channel's going pretty good, but I'm trying to, uh, you know, get an idea of what videos you guys want to see, which ones are more, more helpful, things like that, informative, you know, where you learn something, which is important, for, important to me. So anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my other videos here. Also, check out my InfoWorld Cloud Computing blog. Add that for 15 years. Check that out. Also, my 120 plus LinkedIn learning courses and my generative AI architecture course out on Go Cloud Careers, and of course, my latest book, which is right there. So until next time, you guys stay very, very safe. Cheers. Bye.